So I'm going to refute what Ryan just said and also further back up uh, what Sam stated about how current gun laws do make obtaining a gun difficult. Um, as Ryan stated earlier this morning, um, with not mentally ill people being able to uh, own and possess handguns, there still are laws in effect such as uh, convicted felons or people who are drug addicts still are not allowed to possess uh, handguns. Furthermore, off of an article titled California Gun Laws, um, person or people with certain misdemeanor convictions involving force or violence may not possess or own any firearm within 10 years of conviction. So this gives them enough time to really consider uh, what they've done and by not allowing them to own a handgun or any firearm for that matter within the 10 years of their crime allows them to just think about what they're doing and reconsider their options. Um, to back up what Sam said about how criminals are still going to be able to obtain <coughs> guns, I have a quote from the Washington Post, and that states that lawful gun owners commit less than a fifth of all gun crimes according to a novel analysis released um, J July, in July 27, 2015 by the University of Pittsburgh. And furthermore, the article also states how they found that approximately eight out of ten, in eight out of ten cases, the perpetrator was not a lawful gun owner, but rather an illegal possessor of a weapon that belonged to someone else. So the majority of these crimes are happening illegally as it is, and just by banning guns, it's not really, or banning handguns, it's not really going to fix this problem which is currently going on. And another reason why. Um, people will still be able to get guns it, is that illegal guns are a huge trade in business in the United States. Even if gun control laws are made much more strict, these criminals will still be able to obtain illegal weapons and use them to inflict harm and commit violent crimes. Um, the gun trade is much like the drug trade. Um, it's still illegal to have drugs such as cocaine and heroin, yet people still manage to get a hold of that, so just putting in a law in effect isn't really going to stop them for doing drugs. Why would it stop them for handguns? <coughs> And to back up Sam, that furthermore, it's that fact that um, if handguns are bad, banned, um, people will no longer feel safe. Um, in a 2005 Gallup poll, um, it shows that people, 67% of people purchase guns for crime protection. Now, now 2005 is an older Gallup poll, but I also have something from 2013. And it states that the main reason for owning guns now is still protection, and the amount for hunting has dropped significantly. So people are purchasing handguns to feel safer in their community and at their homes, and by taking them away, you're, you're taking away that sense of security that they have. And um, another statistic that uh, Ryan, or no, but something that Ryan and Jared mentioned was uh, violent crimes that happen due to guns. And um, one of the things that they mentioned were suicides. So I'm just saying that if handguns are banned, uh, I don't think the amount of suicides will actually decrease. Um, every year, over 800,000 people attempt suicide, which means about one person attempts suicide every 38 seconds. And then in the same article, they state that over 40,000 people, or 40,000 Americans die each year by suicide. Um, to tune off of that, the article also states that half of these suicides are used with guns. And following that, 26% are used by poisoning, or sorry, 26 are used by suffocation, and 15% of suicides are done by um, poisons. But only nine, over 300,000 people, sorry, are treated every year in hospitals for suicide attempts. So this just shows that for the small amount of people that actually do commit suicide using guns, there's an even greater amount of <coughs> suicide. And by taking away guns, that's not really going to stop that. Um, they're still going to find ways around it like they would previously.